Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. How is everyone today? Good, I hope. Okay, so now we get to talk about a grade school problem. A problem that you learned about back in the day. We're finally addressing systematic inequality in the uh, education system? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, a problem that you considered in grade school. That is probably <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> so what's today? The fourth. So in grade school, you might have had a problem like this. Uh, something like this. So I'm, I'm going to draw 10 dots. No, 20 dots. We'll do 20. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> okay. So here's 20 dots. How many groups of three can you make? Six. Right. So let's do it in the grade school way. So is there enough to make a group of three? Yes. Yes. OK, so let's make a group of three. So how about this group of three? Is there still enough to make a group of three? Yes, OK. How about here's a group of three? Is there enough to make another group of three? Yes. Yes. How about this group of three? Is there enough to make another group of three? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is there uh, enough to make another group of three? Yes. So how about this group of three? Is there enough to make another group of three? Yes. Okay, how about this group of three? Is there still enough to make a group of three? No. There's not enough to make another group of three. So how many groups of three could we make? Six. Six groups. Okay, so then, so that was question one, and then question two, how many are left over? Two. Two. Uh, two. Okay. So now this, to, it's, this is kind of a boring thing to do, obviously, uh, but uh, you can you can make grade schoolers become very efficient at this if you if you instead frame it in this way. Here are 20 M and M's, and I want you to take away groups of three, and count how many groups of three that you can, and then tell me what remains when you do that. And if you do this problem correctly, then you can have all of the groups of three. Then suddenly they are scientists. Okay, very efficient, no mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of them, perfect. So, <clears throat> so, does anyone know the, the math word for, for these two numbers? This one, so this one is, yes, what is this one? Remainder. The remainder. This one is a little, little more difficult. What is this one called? the number of groups you can take away. This is called the quotient. Okay, the group size. What's the name for the group size? Other one. This is the divisor. And then what is this one? Dividend.
Okay. <clears throat> so now, so this is what you do with like, like um, first graders. This is like a first grader problem. Uh, so now let's do like a like a third grader problem. Divide divide um, <coughs> what? How about uh, twenty eight by three? So divide twenty eight by three. In fact, let's do it a little easier. Let's make it 38. It'll be slightly easier. <laughs> and by 38, I mean 39, uh, 30, yeah, 38 will be fine. Okay, so divide 38 by three. So the way you learn how to do this in third grade or so is you say, okay class, 38 is inside the house and three is outside the house and Three wants to come in. How many times can three go into three? One time. So you write a one right here. You write a one right here. And then you take this one and multiply it by three, and you, mul and you write a three there. And because that's really a 10, you write a zero here, because that's 30. Then what do you do with that? Subtract. So minus. And then when you do that, you have eight. And so now eight is inside of the house, and three wants to come in. So. How many times can 3 come into 8? Mm -hmm. Twice. And you take this 2 and multiply it by that 3, and you that 6, and you write it right there, and then we're going to subtract that many. 8 minus 6 is 2. And so now, 2 is inside the house, and 3 wants to come in. How many times can 3 come in? It cannot. <clears throat> and so, so, that means that what is the quotient? Quotient is 12, and the remainder is what? Two. 2. And as a result of this computation, you now know, or have confirmed anyway, that 38 is 12 multiplied by 3, no, uh, yes, 3 plus 2. That the dividend is the, the quotient multiplied by the divisor plus the remainder. If, if we had 38 M&Ms and we were to break them into groups of three, then you could, you could make 12 such groups and you would have two left over. Okay. Any question about this? <coughs> Any question about this? So now, this, is, this, this procedure right here, the math name for it, and sometimes, depending on your, your third grade class, they may or may not have called that, used this name, this is called the division algorithm. Okay, so the thing that you learned in grade school was how to perform the division algorithm, which is to say how to compute the quotient and the remainder when you're dividing integers. Now we're going to do exactly this, exactly this, except now the objects in question will not be integers, they'll be polynomials. Okay? <clears throat> they'll be polynomials. And this is the, t the subject of section 5.4. dividing polynomials. So to do this, to do this uh, properly requires some bookkeeping. So we're going to have to do several exercises and you're going to have to develop, you know, in a, in a sense, good bookkeeping technique. So let's do one. Divide divide two x cubed minus three x squared plus four x plus five by x plus two. 
So you can see this sentence even looks like the grade school sentence, right? The grade school sentence was divide 38 by 3. Here, it's divide this polynomial by that polynomial. Okay. <coughs> now, when you're performing the division, when you're performing division, you usually want to be dividing something big by something small. Okay, so now we have to, we have to reckon what it means to be big and what it means to be small. Okay, so this polynomial is bigger than that one in the sense that what is the degree of this polynomial? This is degree 3. And what is the degree of, that, of this one? 1. Okay, now, if I was to momentarily, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this, so don't write it down if you're writing in pen. If I was to change this to x to 10, then this one would be degree 10. And in a sense, this would be the big one, right? Okay. So, okay. <clears throat> so just like, just like uh, the division algorithm in grade school, there is a house. So 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 is inside of the house, and x plus 2 is outside of the house. And x plus 2 wants to come in. <laughs> so that part's the same. So the way that you do this, the way that you do this is you consider the, the leading term that is inside of the house. So just like in grade school when you were considering the, the number that was furthest to the left, now we're considering the term that is furthest to the left. And we'll consider the term that is furthest to the left outside as well. So when we were... When we were doing that on the previous page, it was, well, how many times can 3 go into 3? Okay. Now I'm asking, how many times can this one go into that one? Right. So the way that you make this computation is you'll say, OK, I'm going to do, do this over here on the side. I'll take these two. And I'm going to perform the partial quotient, so 2x cubed divide by x. So what is 2x cubed divide by x? 2x squared. So that means it can go in that many times. So that means that we've, we've found part of the quotient. So this needs to be brought to the top of the house and recorded. That gets recorded at the top of the house. Then, what do, we, what do we do with this partial quotient? You multiply it by the divisor. It's got to be multiplied by that. So now I'll take this 2x squared, multiply by x plus 2. So this down here. And now I'm going to take these terms. These terms are going to be recorded right here. So what is, what, what is 2x squared multiplied by x plus 2? 2x cubed plus 4x squared. Yes, 2x cubed plus 4x uh, squared. And then in the division algorithm, what would, what did we, when we were doing integers, what did we do with this part? Subtract that much, and we still must do that. So I can tell that I probably did this step correctly because look at what will happen when, this, when I perform that subtraction. How many cubes will there be? Zero. That's the point, is that when we're finished with this subtraction, there will be no more x cubes. The leading column will be finished. Okay. So 0, and then negative 3x squared minus 4x squared is negative 7x squared, and now these other terms get carried down.
Any question about the first step? Okay, now what? Yeah, same exact thing. Now the leading term inside is 7x squared. And x wants to come in. So that means that now we need to consider the partial quotient of these. OK. So this will be recorded over here. And we'll do negative 7x squared. And then divide by x. So what is that? Good, negative 7x. So that's a partial quotient. What do we do with partial quotients? We bring them to the top and record them. So that has to be recorded. OK, now this partial quotient realizes it's doing a very boring division algorithm task and then jumps off the house. <laughs> but when it jumps off the house, it collides with the divisor. Ha ha ha, right? OK, so negative 7x multiplied by x plus 2. And then we are now going to record those terms up here. So what is negative 7x times x plus 2? minus 14x. And what do we need to do with these terms? Subtract them. I can tell that I've probably done this step correctly because what? Right. When this is, when this is complete, there will be no more squares. We'll be finished with all degree 2 terms. OK. So then. Degree 1 terms will be the only ones that remain. So how much x is there? 18x. 18x plus 5. Now what? <laughs> Same thing. So now 18x is the leading term inside. And x wants to come in. So 18x divided by x is 18. And that's a partial quotient. And what do we do with partial quotients? We record them at the top. And then what does this partial quotient do? Jumps off the house, collides with the divisor. 18 times x plus 2. What do we do with these terms? Right, when we multiply them, we, right, we record them over here. And now that they're recorded over here, what do we do with them? Subtract. Subtract. And what am, I, what am I about to say? I probably did this right because <laughs> there'll be no more x's. OK, so then 5 minus 36 is negative 31. And so now the leading term inside of the house is negative 31 and x wants to come in. How many times can x come in? It cannot. It cannot. Why, why not? So how is it that we reckon size of polynomials in the division algorithm? Degree. By degree. What is the degree of this at when reckoned as a polynomial? Zero. Because you could consider. You, consider, you could consider it to be something like negative 31 multiplied by x to 0. 
right, which is one. So this, when reckoned as a polynomial, this is degree one, or sorry, degree zero. What is this? Degree one. So that means that the thing that is inside is degree zero and the thing outside is degree one. It cannot come in. So we're finished. And we can make our conclusion. Therefore, what is the quotient? Very good. So the quotient is the thing on top of the house, and the remainder is what was left over when we said that we couldn't proceed any further. Okay, and as a consequence of this, we can also write the following. Therefore, 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 the dividend is the quotient 2x squared minus 7x plus 18 multiplied by the divisor x plus 2 plus the remainder. Just like in grade school where we said 38 is 12 multiplied by 3 plus 2. Beautiful. Any question about this? So, now, what about 39 divided by 3? What is 39 divided by 3, quotient and remainder? What's the quotient? What is the remainder? Zero. So, in the special case when the remainder is zero, then the, quotient, then the divisor is said to be a proper divisor. So, 3 is a proper divisor of 39. Is 4 a proper divisor of 39? No. no, because the quotient of 39 by 4 is 9 with the remainder 3. Okay? So then, 4 is not a proper divisor of 39. And just like that, is x plus 2 a proper divisor of 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5? No. No, it is not a proper divisor. Why not? Because it has a non-zero remainder. Okay. So, I, can, I, I didn't do it on this example, but I could give you one where you would end up and here you would have zero. And then you could say, okay, well the quotient is that and this divisor is a proper divisor. Okay, very nice. Any question about this? So now let's do one that's slightly more complicated. Except it, won't, it probably won't feel too much more complicated now that you, I think, have the general idea down. So for example, divide, uh, divide what? Divide 3x to 5 minus 4x to 3 plus uh, 6x to 2 minus 7x plus uh, 10 by x squared plus 1. Okay. So now, what is, what is the degree of the dividend? 5. What is the degree of the divisor? 2. So, so can we proceed? Yes. The dividend is bigger than the divisor. Now if I wrote this zero here for a moment, then there'd be nothing to do. This would be like me saying, suppose that you have five M&Ms and I want you to take away groups of 20. How many groups of 20 can you take away? Zero. So there'd be nothing to do, right? Okay. Now, there, on this exercise, there is a slight gotcha, a place where you could make an error. And it is the following. So, on the previous exercise, what I'd like for you to observe is that when I wrote it, besides all of the arrows, you don't need to write the arrows. 
to solve the exercise. I write the arrows because I want you to understand what, what happened when. And also, if you want to look at the notes, you could figure out what I was doing. Okay. But you don't have to John Madden <laughs> your <laughs> exercise like that. Okay. Now, look at the cubes. All the cubes are vertically aligned. And then all the squares are vertically aligned. And then all the degree one terms are vertically aligned. And all the degree zero terms are vertically aligned. So the, the way this procedure works is it works in a table, like in a grid. This column is all degree three, this one all degree two, this one all degree one, this one all degree zero. So what could possibly go wrong on this exercise? Well, th the dividend doesn't have a degree four term. And what else? Yeah, the divisor is missing a degree one term. So there's terms missing. So when you do this procedure, when you do this procedure, you need to write the missing terms. Otherwise, it is highly likely that you will misalign the columns. Which is to say, I will record the, divisor, uh, the dividend in the house as 3x to 5 plus 0 x to 4, that was a missing term, plus, uh, sorry, minus, Four x cubed plus six x squared minus seven x plus ten, and I will write uh, record this, the divisor outside the house, as x squared plus zero x's plus one. Okay, and that'll help me keep things vertically aligned. Other than that, this question is exactly like the previous one. So now I'm going to start doing this quite rapidly because we have other things to talk about. So the leading term inside is this. The leading term outside is that. I need to construct a partial quotient. The partial quotient is 3x to 5 by x to 2, which is 3x to 3. That's a partial quotient. It needs to be recorded. It jumps off the house. Hits the divisor on the way down. 3x to 3 multiplied by x squared plus 0x plus 1. These terms get recorded underneath the dividend, 3x to 5 plus 0x to 4, <coughs> and then uh, plus 3x to 3. Those terms need to be subtracted from the dividend. OK, so I can tell I probably did this step correctly because the leading terms are now gone. So no degree 5 terms. As just a nice convenience, there are also no degree 4 terms. So then negative uh, 7x cubed, and then carry down the other terms. So to be specific, <coughs> Uh, what, what happens is that if you don't vertically align things, what I observe is students accidentally subtract degree four terms from degree three terms or, or vice versa. Okay, so now the leading term inside of the house is this. I need to construct a partial quotient. Uh, so it would be this negative 7x to 3 divided by x to 2 is negative 7x. This partial quotient needs to be recorded. So up here, uh, 
partial quotient jumps off the house, hits the divisor on the way down, These terms are recorded under the dividend. <coughs> Negative seven x cubed plus zero x squared minus seven x. And we're gonna subtract that much. <coughs> I can tell that I probably did this step correctly because Right, the leading terms are gone. Uh, so then now we'll have 6x squared. And then we'll have 0x's, that's nice. And then we'll have to carry down the 10. Okay, so can we proceed further? Yeah. Yes. But you might say, well, wait a minute, this is a degree 2. What's the condition to continue or stop? The, de the degree you stop when the, de when the degree w of what is inside is less than. So it's just like me asking, there's two M&Ms on the table, degree two, and you can take away groups of two. Can you take away a group? Yes, and you must. So So 6x squared divide by x squared, well that's 6, that partial quotient needs to be taken to the top and recorded. That partial quotient jumps off the house, hits the divisor on the way, on the way down. <coughs> This product is recorded underneath the current dividend. No more squares, no more x's, four. Now can we proceed? No. And so we can make our conclusion. Therefore, what is the quotient? Very good. Terrific. Any question about this? So I have a, I have a comment. Wow, isn't this tedious? Yes, it's pretty tedious. Okay, so we've done two examples. Here they are. And they're, they are, in a sense, qualitatively different. So the way that we did them is exactly the same. And I have good news. The first one, the first kind, I can actually shorten this for you, and I can make it to where you can perform this entire computation in about 15 seconds. Okay, and it'll only take about that much space. Wouldn't that be great if we could do that? It would be worth figuring that out if we could do that. This one can't be made any shorter. This one is, just is what it is. So we can make this one shorter. We can make this one shorter because this divisor is degree one. And because this divisor is degree one, it can be turned into a special case of something else. This divisor is degree two. It's just not going to ever get any better than this. It's just going to be bad. Okay? But, okay, the majority of what we're going to be doing is with degree one. So you'll only have to do this on occasion, but you will have to do it. Okay, now, to show you how, how we can do this degree one problem cr quite easily, I need to do something that, for the moment, is going to seem completely unrelated. So I'm going to be talking about something for about five or ten minutes, and it's going to seem like non sequitur. Why are we talking about this? Okay. 
But for now, what I want you to remember is I want you to remember these numbers. 2, negative 7, 18, negative 31. So remember those numbers for a moment, please. <coughs> okay. So suppose that I say, here's a nice polynomial. f of x is f of x is 2x cubed uh, minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. Okay. That is the same polynomial that, that we that was a dividend in a previous problem. Two problems ago. So suppose I say now I want you to evaluate f at x is negative 2. And I'm going to do this in, in what I suspect is pretty much the only way you know how to do this. Okay, so I want you to do f plug in negative 2. If you do that, that would be 2 multiplied by negative 2 cubed minus 3 multiplied by negative 2 squared plus 4 multiplied by negative 2 plus 5. So I'll carry out those operations. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8 multiplied by another 2 is negative 16. But I'll, I guess I'll just do it like this. Let's not, let's show our work here. Okay, so negative 3 and then that would be a 4. And then 4 times negative 2, so that's minus 8 plus 5. And then this would be negative 16. This would be minus 12, minus 8, plus 5. So now I'll start combining things. So combining those two, that would be negative 28. Combining these two, that would be minus 3. And negative 28 minus 3 is negative 31. Didn't we see a negative 31 somewhere before? It was the remainder. Huh. Interesting. So now I'm going to evaluate this polynomial, but I'm going to do it in a completely different way. So I'm going to, in a sense, turn this polynomial inside out in a certain way. So what I'd like for you to observe is that <clears throat> this polynomial so let's, let's just write it down. So 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. And what I'd like for you to observe is that with the exception of the last term, don't all of the terms have x in them? Yeah, they've all got an x. They've all got an x. So I'm going to factor that x out of, the, of all terms but the last one. And if I was to do that, this would be 2x squared minus 3x plus 4, and then plus 5. So I factored out that x. And now what I'd like for you to observe is inside of the square parentheses, all the terms except the last one have an x in them. So I'm going to factor that x out. Okay, now what do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> Now I'm going to say that, okay, in the, inside, in the innermost place, do you see that all the terms except for the last one have an x? So I'm going to factor that x out.
Okay. So a couple comments. For, first is that the innermost thing is now two and there's no more X's, so that's, I know that I'm supposed to stop now. Second, when I, when I do procedures like this, when there's just lots of parentheses, I alternate their shapes between square and round so that you can visually match what with what. So I'm not just like choosing randomly or losing my mind or something. Okay. So now, I'm going to plug in negative two, except now I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna start with this, th with this two right here. And if I wanted to plug negative two into this, then I do two times negative two is negative four, and then subtract three is negative seven. And then multiply by negative two is, is positive 14, and then, sub, and then add four is 18, and then multiply by negative two is negative 36, and add five is 31. So I was able to do that, or ne negative 31. I was able to do that really pretty quickly like this. So watch, two times negative two is negative four. Minus three is negative seven. Multiplied by negative two is positive 14. Add four is positive 18. Multiplied by negative two is negative 36. Add five is negative 31. So what I'm doing is that I take a number and then, I, then I, once I take that number, I alternate between multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, Interesting. So all that really matters are these numbers, 2, negative 3, 4, and 5, to do that. So I'm going to forget about all these parentheses. And I'm just going to record these in a table. Those numbers, 2, negative 3, 4, and 5. 2, negative 3, 4, and 5. And where did we want to? Where did we want to evaluate this polynomial? Negative At negative two, so I'll put negative two right here. <clears throat> and now, I'm gonna call this a house. So this is a house, and two wants to get outside. Yeah, two gets outside, wants to get outside of the house now. So two gets out and it comes out as a two, and then it realize, realizes, oh, I'm hungry and I want a sandwich. So it has to come back. But negative two is guarding the door. Negative two is guarding the door. So when this two comes back in, it gets multiplied by negative two, and what is it? Negative four. And then now, these children want to, want to sneak out. So when they sneak out, they add together and become a what? A negative seven. And then they realize, oh, we're hungry and we want a sandwich. But negative two is guarding the door. So negative seven comes back in as what? <laughs> positive 14, because negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. And then now we add these to get what? 18. But now 18 is hungry and wants a sandwich. Okay. But negative 2 is guarding the door. And so this is, yeah, negative 36. And now these want to sneak out. And what do you get when they do that? Negative 31. So what were those numbers that I wanted you to memorize? They were 2, negative 7, 18, and negative 31. I don't remember. 2, negative 7, 18, 31, negative 31. Oh, wow. <laughs> we have stumbled upon something that's quite useful. So the way that this went in history, in history is that uh, you know, there used to be a time before calculators and computers, if you can fathom, no. if you can fathom such a circumstance. Okay, but nevertheless, before that was the case, there were still polynomials, and people knew of them. And there was still science and navigation and everything else, and people wanted to be able to, for example, navigate the Atlantic without dying. <laughs> Right? And there were people whose job was to reckon the position of the, of the, of the ship, okay, using only measurements, you know, the angles of stars and how fast have we been traveling and for how long. And it comes down to you have to be able to evaluate polynomials. And so it was literally someone's job to, to do this, to do this kind of thing. 
So this, this method of evaluating a polynomial by turning it inside out and then alternating adds and multiplies, this is called Horner's scheme to evaluate a polynomial. And then when science started getting, you know, when math and science started getting further, it became obvious that, oh, we're going to need to be able to divide polynomials. And th there, was, there was a long period of time where people didn't realize this scheme to, to, <laughs> the scheme to um, evaluate a polynomial is actually also performing a division. So there was a, there was a long period of time where people were, <laughs> were doing this to evaluate polynomials and doing this to divide polynomials. Okay, but when you're evaluating a polynomial, that's equivalent to dividing it by a, a polynomial of degree one. So now, I can give you another question. I can say. I can make the remark. The table on the previous page is called Horner's scheme. to evaluate a polynomial. The other numbers that it gives you, it also gives you the quotient and remainder So this is the beautiful part. And for that reason, in history, this was called Horner's scheme to, to divide a polynomial. But as soon as it became clear that this was also an important method to perform polynomial division, and not as soon as, but really actually several decades later, this started to be called synthetic division. However, to a mathematician, it will always be Horner's scheme in my heart. So, <clears throat> dividing, dividing by x minus k is the same as evaluating at x is k. So, evaluate. Evaluating at 10 is the same as dividing by what? Evaluating at 10 is the same as dividing by x minus 10. Evaluating at 8 is the same as dividing by x minus 8. Evaluating at pi is the same as dividing by x minus pi. Okay, now here's a tricky one. Evaluating at negative 5 is the same as dividing by x plus 5. Dividing by x minus 12 is the same as evaluating at, at 12. OK, so now in the time remaining, let's do one. Because it, you, we really do have 30 seconds, and I can do one in that time. So divide 3x to 4 plus uh, 3x squared plus 7x minus 1 by uh, x minus 2. Okay. So I'm not going to do the long division thing because this is a degree 1 polynomial. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this table. And what coefficients go in the top row? 3. No, zero. three zero, and then why why zero? By the way, there's no cubes. Okay, then seven, then negative one, and what goes outside the house? Two goes outside the house. Two goes outside the house because remember, evaluating at two is the same as dividing by x minus two. And so now, I'm going to do this leisurely, but I want you to see really just how quick it is. 3, 6, 6, 
12, 15. <clears throat> and then 30, 37, 74, 73. This three is here. So, and then this, when this comes back in, it multiplies by two, add, multiply by two, add, multiply by two, add, multiply by two, add. So this tells us that what's the quotient? 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 15x plus 37. And the remainder is 73. And you also know that if we call this, if we call that f of x, what is f evaluated at 2? What do you get if you plug in 2? 73. And we'll do more of this on Monday. Have a nice weekend.